All right, what's going on, my beautiful people out there on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and all the other social media platforms? It's your boy, Rome. And today, guys, I'm a little excited. I know I'm a little late to the party, but we will be upgrading some of our gear. This is a long time coming lens. Um, even way back in the day when I was using Nikons, I never really invested in a 24 to 70, a 2.8. As much as I know I probably needed it, you know, periodically, I could always make do with some of the uh, primes that I had. So I just made it work. Um, if you look at this camera that I have right here, this is the uh, Sony AR7 II. And currently mounted on this camera is the 135 1.8 that is on here. This is a 82 millimeter front element on this lens. So this is probably one of the largest lenses that I own um, that I'm using for commercial work. So again, I never really invested in um, a 24 to 70. I'm recording this now on the Sony a7 III using the Sigma 35 millimeter 1.4. So that's what I'm using to record this video that you're seeing right now. And just a little bit of housekeeping so everyone's on the same page. I am recording all of my audio into the Rodecaster Pro and I am using the scratch audio coming off of the Sony a7 III that I will then most likely match up in post. I'll probably do most of the editing on the iPad because guys, to be honest, iPads today, 2018, 2020 are so much faster than many of the more modern Macs, iMacs, like what you see here in the background, that's an iMac that I'm recording into using a Adobe Audition. So that's pretty much my setup. So usually what I do uh, when I'm recording something like this, the audio will be going into the Rodecaster Pro, which is then feeding audio into the iMac, which is recording it additionally in Adobe Audition. Now I am not recording into the Rodecaster Pro itself, but simply enough I could just hit one button and I would be doing a dual recording where we're recording to the SD card in the uh, Rodecaster Pro as well as recording straight into Adobe Audition. So this came from a uh, retailer on Amazon. I believe they're an authorized dealer. Well, I'm pretty sure they're an authorized dealer. And um, I got this yesterday. So you guys will be seeing what's in this box the same time I will. Okay, so let's take a look at what's in the box. So obviously the first thing you're going to be greeted with is going to be that dreaded documentation, the paperwork. So we have a couple of manuals. And this looks like a registration card. I'm pretty sure it is. It's going to be for your warranty. Trust me, guys, keep that. Here is that strap that almost no one ever uses for literally anything. So, you know, there's that. And one of the things that I really like about Sigma lenses is they always come with these really nice cases. Now, honestly, I don't use these cases for anything. Uh, I never really, I never really use them to um, transport the lenses or anything like that. But I'll tell you what we're going to do. Before we get to unboxing or taking a look at this lens, we're going to go through this entire manual. We're going to read it word for word, exactly everything that Sigma says we need to No, I'm just kidding. There's no way we're going to do that. That is not going to happen. Okay, so let's get to it. There we go, guys. So, eh, you know, it's funny. I, I've seen so many people unbox this lens. And the first thing they say is, man, that lens is so heavy. It is just, it is ridiculously heavy. Guys, I think you need to spend a little time in the gym because this is not heavy. Trust me, it's not. Yes, it feels good in the hand. It's a good hand weight, but there's nothing heavy about this. I came from the Nikon world where I was shooting with a Sony, oh, excuse me, a Nikon DA50 with the grip, two batteries in it. And on most occasions, uh, I would have a 70 to 200 lens on there and probably a flash on top of that. And that was an on day, all day shoot, you know, running around for six, sometimes eight hours, you know, doing a, a wedding or some type of a commercial event. So I guess I just got so used to it. It is what it is. So I'm going to get this little strap out of the way because like I said, I'll probably never use that. Put our lens right there. Now I do, 
I am, you know, kind of a fan of this lens cap, but I have gone through so many lenses. And one of the things that I notice all the time, over time, the rubber on the lenses, the lining inside of them, the lens cap I'm referring to, and as well as your um, straps that go around your lens for your focus and your zoom, you know, those two wear out after a time. Uh, when I sold my 70 to 200, literally I had a rubber band that was going around, <laughs> going around the lens to keep that band on, on, on the lens because it was just, you know, hanging on for dear life. So I never even wasted my time as to sending it in and having it repaired because I knew I was going to be, um, transferring over to the Sony system. So, uh, you know, I let the next guy fix that or the, you know, where I sold the lens, you know, that was something they were probably going to deal with. Okay. So let's take a closer look at this lens. So looking at it in comparison to the other Sigma lenses that I have, it, it's right along in the same category. You know, it looks like a metal body. It has um, your three switches. One is going to be your autofocus to manual focus. One is going to be a programmable button, which is right here. Now, just like most Sony lenses, you can program this button to do literally anything. So any of the features that you can program within buttons on your Sony camera, you can program to this button if you need to. You know, I don't really use the buttons on the lens that often. Um, I almost never use them, so I'm not going to tell you any lies. So then you also have this locking button here, and this locking button is designed to lock the lens when it's uh, completely compressed, and then when you unlock it, then you're able to, at that point, zoom in and out. Now, when this is locked, you can just turn the zoom, and it will unlock, and then you're able to still get your shot. So that, for the most part, is just a feature I think they put in just to make it easier when you're transporting it so you don't have to worry about the lens, you know, wobbling all over the place uh, or when you're putting it in your bag. It just makes it a lot easier. So anyway, there we go. So let's take a look at this element. All right, guys. There's that front element. It is 82 millimeters, which is pretty large. I think the G Master is about the same size. I know that the Tamron 24 to 70 is much smaller, but I mean that's that's a pretty decent size uh, lens element. Now the 135 has the exact same size. The one thing that I have been concerned about a couple of times is that you know if you use ND filters, it is a pain in the butt to find a ND filter that will fit you know these large lenses. But luckily. I had already invested in an ND filter um, a couple of years ago, honestly. And what I have here is an 82 millimeter ND filter, but currently I have a step down ring on it, which I use for my smaller lenses. So that way I can still use the same ND filter on my Sony 85 millimeter or, you know, one of the other, you know, lenses that I have. I can always still use this ND filter if I need it. But, this ND filter should seat perfectly. Let's make sure we're lining it up. Yep. As you see, it seats perfectly on that lens, no problem. So that's a win. All right, guys, just a little bit of comparison. This is the 135 in comparison to the 24 to 70. And as you see, they're pretty much, they're close to the same height when the 24 to 70 is at its lowest um, focal length at 24 millimeters. But this is substantially heavier than the 24 to 70. So if you can rock this, this will be no problem. None whatsoever. And we're going to pop this on to... All right, there we go. Let me take this off just so you guys can see what this looks like a little bit better. Okay, so here we go. So now we have mounted on the A7R2, the Sigma 24 to 72.8. So we see, as we see here, yeah, it's just telling me I don't have a memory card in. Let's see, autofocus. Uh, 
Let's zoom in. Oh, looks pretty good. And even without um, the grip on this specific model, because most of my cameras, all of them have a grip that I place on. Uh, this one I don't have uh, a vertical grip because a lot of times I'll use this camera for video. As you saw, I took off the uh, screen um, cover. But this is what you get, guys. So this is what you're going to get if you're interested in investing in this lens. The 24 to 7, <laughs> 24 to 70 millimeter uh, 2.8 Sigma lens, which, like I said, holding this in my hand right now, if this was on one of the other camera bodies minus this cage, I think for the most part I could run around with this for the majority of the day and it really would not be a big deal. But if this is a big deal for you guys, what I would always suggest is that get yourself a really good neck strap or a shoulder strap and you can use that. Now what I have used in the past, let me show you really quick, is this spider belt system. And what that allows you to do is to put onto the camera, the bottom of the camera, here on the tripod mount, and you're able to just, you know, drop this in like a holster, and you can have this on your hip walking around. I have two different mounts where you can easily um, uh, run two different cameras on the belt and have your hands free if you need to. Uh, if you guys are curious about this, I'm assuming they still make this belt. If they don't, I guarantee you there's someone making something similar to it. So um, I will put a link for that down in the description. And if you guys are interested, you can definitely find that probably on Amazon or one of the other uh, camera retailers like um, Autorama or B&H, something like that. All right, guys. So this is my first in, in, um, impressions of this, this new lens. I will be trying to get out sometime this week, probably tomorrow, because I have absolutely nothing to do but finish up the editing of the wedding that I aforementioned. So I will probably be getting out um, somewhere around the city, taking some shots with this lens and see exactly um, what kind of quality I'm getting. I don't foresee any problems with this lens. I think it's going to be a workhorse. And I think anyone who is ready to make that investment, when you think about the difference in cost between the uh, Sony G Master, which is $21.99 uh, at the time of this video, you can get this lens right now for $1,049 plus tax, I believe it was, you know, which is a really, really good deal. But if you're on a budget, the Tamron version of the 28 to 75 is still a very good lens. And I see a lot of people on Facebook and uh, different forms that are using that lens and they love it. Now, I don't know if they purchased the lens just because it's cheaper or perhaps it was the only thing that was available at the time when, you know, these cameras came out and they were looking for something that was going to give them that 2.8. Uh, but, you know, if it works for you and whether you're using it in a professional environment or you're using it just for fun, if you love it and it gives you the type of images that you're trying to capture, by all means, go for it. So don't let somebody bully you or con you into spending money that you cannot afford. I'm investing in this lens because I do a lot of commercial work and I know the benefit of having, you know, the high end gear to get the job done. So that's what I've done here. All right, guys, it's your boy Rome and I will catch you fools in the next video or podcast. Don't forget to follow me on Anchor and you can check out a number of different podcasts that I have going on Anchor. Those links will be also in the description below. And if you're interested and being on one of my upcoming podcasts, feel free to download the Anchor app as well as leave me a message. And if your question is interesting, I may add it to one of my upcoming podcasts. All right, guys, until then, it's been your boy, Rome. Peace. I'm out.